Hey everyone, I'm Abby Guido, and I'm going to talk to you today about Adobe Substance 3D Stager. Stager is the um, newer version of Adobe Dimension. So if you're familiar with Dimension, this will be pretty easy to pick up. But one of the major differences is that the performance in Stager is much, much better. Okay, so this is an app that allows you to quickly create 3D scenes. As designers, we use it often for mocking up packaging, uh, but also you'll see many people are using it as an illustration tool. Um, so there's many uses for Stager. One of the first things to learn about Stager, what you see here is our stage, is how to use the camera. There's a few things that you have to start doing when you start working in a 3D space to kind of get used to how to function in this space. And there, there's a little bit of a learning curve, but once you get it, it um, it's really a lot of fun. So the three main key commands to learn, and they're all over here on the left-hand side of the tools, are orbit, pan, and dolly. And the key commands are really simple, one for orbit, two for pan, and three for dolly. So if I hit one, I can orbit all around. If I hit two, I can pan, and three is like a dolly. All these terminologies come from um, recording with a video camera, so hence the camera. Okay, so once you kind of learn how to navigate the camera angles, then you can start learning how to use the objects. So Stager comes with some starter assets, and that's right up here in this panel. You can see basic shapes, models. You can scroll down, see there's lots of models. And then the other great thing is that you all have access to Adobe Stock through uh, our Tyler GI of the organization. And you can find assets that you want to request and you can get them to use in your projects. Um, I'll just show you really quickly. Let's say I threw a cube down here. The great thing with the basic shapes and some of the models as well is that you can edit them. So if I go all the way to the far right under um, my object here, you can see that I can change the width. So I can say, okay, this is actually 50 centimeters and it changes. And one of the really cool things are that this also works with some of our assets here. Let's see, I'm gonna grab a simple shelving unit. You can see that comes in very big because it's the actual size. So I'm gonna pan out here so we can see it. I'm gonna use um, the move tool V, same as other apps here. You can see if something, you're not sure where it is on the page, you can also use this little button under actions which knocks it to the ground. So let's see if I'm floating this up in the ground air, it'll move it to the ground. Um, so what you can do here is you can actually change some of these objects. Um, trans, let's see, it's under object, the levels, so I can add shelves. I can change the depth of the shelves. So a lot of these objects are built so that you can actually edit them. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. I do wanna go in and zoom in on my stage. So I'm gonna pan in here and then I'm going to dolly around and rotate a little bit. I had started this, so I had it for this little demo. You'll see that I built a little bit of a uh, background and a, a ground for everything to sit on. This is how you can control the colors. And it also helps when you get into lighting. Um, this bottle here is just one of the free assets that comes with the uh, program. So this is our shampoo bottle, I think it's called. Let's see, it's right here. And I'm gonna actually wanna throw a shampoo bottle on this platform I made, this is just cylinder here. So I'm gonna just grab a bottle, it's so simple. I'm just gonna drop it. And you'll see that it comes up and it shows me, okay, this kind of smart guide of where to place something. I wanna place it right here on top of this platform, but I wanna show you where that is located in case you don't see that. If you go under your um, selection tool here, you're gonna see some options and this is called snapping. So when snapping is turned on, you'll be able to snap things to other objects. Collision, if I turn that on, you'll see snapping turns off. What collision does is that allows you to put objects on top of one another. So, or inside of one another. So you actually can collide the two objects. The default really should just be snapping and you should lose collision for when you need it. I'm gonna get out of here, all right. So I have my bottle on here now. What you see here, this is another um, new visual if you're not familiar with 3D software that everyone should learn. This is the gizmo. And the gizmo allows us to do a lot of things. It allows us to move an object, we can move it around on all the axes. So I can do this on the X here. I can do it on the Z here. 
and I can do it on the y axis here. It also allows us to rotate. So you can see I'm rotating it down. That's not what I want. So I'm going to undo that. I can rotate it forward again, I'm going to undo that, and I can rotate it on the platform. So let's rotate it just a little bit here. Can I get there maybe? All right. Now, if I want to be more precise, I can also go under here and you're going to see there's other selection arrows. There's a move arrow, a rotate, and a scale. And they all have key commands. These are other good commands to, to know. I do use the R key command often, and that is the scale, so that I can scale an object. I don't want this ginormous shampoo bottle, so I'm going to undo that. And then I'm going to go back by hitting V just to my selection tool. So now I have my shampoo bottle and I can start working on it. So I know that I want the lid to be a different color. And if I zoom in for you on the lid over here, you can see that I actually selected different parts and did it differently. So the very top is green and the bottom is metal. And so if I wanted to do that again, I can use magic wand. And so the wand is tricky because it's only going to select, I'm holding down shift to select multiple parts, what it sees. So I have to kind of spin around so that I can try to get the other side. Do that. Okay, uh-oh, I can't see. What am I going to do? So I'm going to go over to this side here, and I'm just going to turn off the planes. So they're still there, but this way I can see better. Make sure I go back to my wand, hold down shift. I'm switching back and forth by using the one to rotate and then holding down shift to add to the selection. And I want to do that bottom part with a material. So materials are things we put on top of objects. Um, and they're just that, they're materials. And so I'm going to go ahead and find something shiny for this. I think I'm going to do some kind of, let's try the metal brush. And I throw it on there. And it will only go on the parts that I selected with the wand. And so you'll see it's only on the bottom. And then I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to start a new selection. And I'm going to select the lid. I'm going to rotate around. And this time I want to just try to get everything in here selected. I'm not going to worry about being super precise at the moment for this demo. Okay, zoomed in too much. Let's see. No, I did my piece there. Here, here. There we go. This is why learning these key commands for all of the camera angles is so important. All right, it looks like I have everything selected. And I'm going to go ahead and do that part as metal polished, just so we can see kind of the difference between the two. There we go. All right, so we'll say I'm happy with that. So now I want to kind of zoom back and get back into sight. There's everything. I'm going to go ahead and turn my planes back on so we can see everything. And before I move further, I want to talk a little about cameras. And so this is just the viewport camera. This is the default camera. This is the camera you're going to probably work in the most. But as you start working on your scenes, you may start to find a camera angle that you want to save, something that you like and you think that might be part of your final render. So I'm just kind of playing around now to get to something that maybe I'm excited about and I like. All right. And here. All right. Let's say this is one of the final shots I want. What I want to do is I want to go ahead here and add a camera. I'm just going to click here. You can see it adds a camera. The size is already set. If I want to change that size, I can. And right now I am working in this camera. So any changes I make will change this camera view. If I turn it off, you're going to see I jump back into the viewport camera. And so I can move around if I want to see, okay, how's it looking on the back? If I want to go back to seeing that camera view, I can just click on it and it'll pop back in. A common mistake a lot of folks make is they accidentally change their camera. So I start working in here and start playing around, zooming in, let's see. And then that is actually my new camera. So that is how you edit a camera as well. So I'm going to pop out of there just so that we can keep working on this scene. 
Okay, so now I have my bottle. A lot of these objects have multiple parts. So I'm gonna open that shampoo bottle. You're gonna see that there is a body mesh. So that is the bottom part. And there is a cap mesh. So I can also isolate one piece I wanna work on that way. Um, for this shampoo bottle over here, what I did was I used a material. And so if I go to my body mesh and my material here, you're gonna see the material was called spotted paint, right? It's right there. And the great thing about these materials and materials are also available on Adobe stock are that you can actually change them. So I can change the speckle roughness. I can change the color of the speckles. So let's say I'm gonna change all those to maybe a purpley color. You can see they're all changing. This one actually has three speckles if you change. Um, I don't see where the other ones are. They're probably just super small, but I can change the colors of my speckles. There we go. Um, and something else I should talk a little about right now is, is ray tracing and how you can see this, um, how it will actually look. All right, so ray tracing only works on your computer if you can handle it. What it allows us to do is start to see how the scene actually will look when rendered. You can see I turn it on and off. If I click here, I can see what it's using. So is it doing it medium or high? So this is how good of a preview it's gonna show us. I'm gonna keep mine on medium. What is the resolution? Is it full resolution or half resolution or a quarter? Again, that all uh, impacts the quality of the visual you're gonna see. And I like to kind of jump in and out of ray tracing because it does slow, slow things down a little bit. Um, but I'm also on a, a PC that's made to be used for 3D rendering. So it's a little bit faster than some of your machines might be. Okay, it does slow it down in Zoom. So just a heads up. All right, so I have a shampoo bottle now. Um, so for this bottle, instead of putting a material on it, um, the same way that I did for the lid, I'm gonna actually put a graphic on. I'm gonna put two graphics on it that I have on my desktop here. The first one is stripes. I'm just gonna drag it on and just drop it right on. And then I'm gonna scale it. And so this is just a pattern. Um, one of the things just to know about this, and I'm not gonna get deep into it, but it might not look great on the back because we haven't yet controlled how it actually wraps. For the purpose of this demo, it's fine for what we're using it for, but there is something called um, UVs that you can go in and you can adjust how something gets wrapped. Um, so I'm gonna leave that there. And I like how that looks. Now I'm gonna throw a label on top. Just gonna drop it on. These are assets that I had already made and saved so that we could use it. All right, just pop that on there. All right, so now I'm getting a little closer. Let's see my camera that I saved that I like. Okay, I'm gonna rotate these a little bit. I can select both at the same time by hitting down shift. Oops, sorry, shift. I don't know if it's doing it at the same time. I'm just gonna turn them a little so the bottles are kind of facing the same way. I think that looks a little nicer. All right, so now let's talk about the final step before we render, and that's lighting. Um, so each scene in Stager comes with a default environment lighting. And environment lighting covers the entire visual. So this is for the entire environment. And you can do a few things. You can actually add a background image that is just for an environment light. Um, and you also can go ahead and you can change the intensity and the rotation. So I'm gonna ray trace so that we can see this a little better. And so you can see as I'm rotating it around, everything changes a little bit and that looks pretty nice. Um, and we can bring up and down the intensity. Uh, one of the nice new features in Stager that was not available in Dimension is the ability to actually see where your lights are and to add spotlights. So I'm going to make sure I turn off this camera so I don't mess up my angle because I'm going to want to zoom out a little bit. And if I go over here, if everything isn't up the way you want it, you can always go down to this little file box and that will bring everything back up for you. And so here are my assets. I'm going to go here to my lights. Um, you see all of these visuals here, these are all environment lights. So I can actually change the environment it's in. So if you want to be in a small apartment, you can change that. I should show you that really close before we end to spotlights. So let's go back to my environment light. See, here's my image for my environment light. So if I wanted to change that to a small apartment, 
I can just drop that on and it changes the lighting. It bases it on wherever the scene was. I'm gonna undo that though. Let's see. And I undo that. There we go. Okay. And I'm gonna show you all some spotlights. So we have a few different options. Um, spotlight is just what it says, it's a spotlight. Uh, the, the directional light is all in one direction. Um, and I don't recall the arena, the point is a cone and this part right here is a spotlight. So I actually have a few spotlights I threw in here already. So I'm gonna just go ahead and turn those back on so you can see what I did. So one spotlight, Rotate so you can see it changing out. Let's see where is the spotlight? Let me try the other one. Get out of ray tracing and see if that helps us. We, ah, here we go. I just had to hit V so I could see them. All right. So let me turn off the second one just to work on this first one. So here is the spotlight, you can see it here. If I zoom in on my camera view and I turn on my ray tracing, you can see what it's doing. So that spotlight is off the page right now, so we can't see it. But if I zoom out and go here, now we can see it. And you can see that I can actually move around where this is. You can start to even see the light. So you can see where it's going. And this is really great to use with an environment light where you wanna light something up. So you can see the spotlight is getting some harsh shadows on the side here. So if I turn it off, the shadows disappear. So it was a little dark on that side, so I wanted to lighten it up. Um, I can change the intensity, maybe it's a bit too intense. And I can play around with the exposure as well, which will impact how intense it is. All right, let's go back in here and take a look. All right, it's looking good. This was an accidental area light that I added. So I'm gonna actually just delete that out. Okay, and something else really fun about spotlights and what I do with my second spotlight is that spotlights can actually have color. So this spotlight here, it has a purpley tint to it, which then gets on this image here and you can see that purple light on there. Um, so a stager is super powerful. There's so much you can do in it. There's so much to learn. Uh, the last step is rendering, and that really isn't much to show on a demo, but this is where you go in and this is where you can export stuff. You can save stuff as PSDs or PNGs. Uh, so I hope that you've learned a lot today and I'm really excited to see what you're gonna create.